now it is visible sir uh, my, my apologies <laughs> uh, okay yeah so i think i think we are uh, okay so we were discussing about the need for biofuels need of biofuels why do we need uh, biofuels so if you see at the international market the crude oil prices keeps fluctuating and uh, sometimes uh, the cost is so high that it's becoming very difficult for a country developing country like us because uh, if you see 6.7% of india's gdp uh, is spent for uh, road transport and especially for the fuel sector so which is a huge so in order to reduce the dependency on imports and other things so government wanted to have uh, or promote uh, biofuels similarly in this 6.7% uh, uh, of contribution by uh, by the bio, uh, by the fuels diesel alone contributes to 72% whereas uh, the remaining 23% is by petrol and uh, hardly 1% uh, or even uh, even lesser percentage by cng lpg and other fuels if you see the statistics uh, i don't have the updated figure it's uh, as per the policy in uh, 2017 18 india uh, had a requirement of the domestic uh, fuel consumption was about uh, 210 million metric tons and the indigenous uh, availability of fuel was only 18% and 82% we met our requirements through imports which is a huge uh, that's uh, one of the reason why the dollar price uh, the indian currency value is going down and the dollar is always increasing and similarly we need to have a maintain energy security so accordingly the government has set a target to reduce the import dependency by at least 10% by 2022 with it, with this great vision uh, government has formulated this uh, biofuel policy to promote uh, biofuels as an alternative to petrol based uh, fuels so then what was the strategy so government has prepared a road map to reduce the import dependency in oil uh, so government uh, has adopted a five pronged strategy which includes on one hand we will increase the domestic production then uh, we will try to adopt biofuels and renewable fuels as much as possible then we will also take up energy efficiency norms like if you see the national building code of 2007 or Uh, most of the buildings and it parks these days you might be noticing that uh, they are following this energy efficiency measures even in industries also zero liquid discharge uh, like this several initiatives have been uh, taken to reduce the energy dependency similarly uh, we also want to improve our refinery processes so that uh, and then wherever possible we are trying to reduce the uh, requirement of fuel through car pooling or some other like more usage promotion of uh, public transport usage of public transport like this so this is the five pronged strategy the government has adopted to increase uh, the import dependency in oil then coming to what is the opportunities uh, what are the opportunities that india has with regard to biofuels if you see biofuels in india has a strategic importance one th uh, one thing like uh, this also fits under several of uh, the government's mandate like make in india and swachh bharat abhiyan so these are already existing programs of government of india which can be clubbed with this objective also so that uh, it can enhance the dual purpose similarly we also want to these are some of the schemes of the government of india like uh, make in india then swachh bharat abhiyan we want to double the farmers income then uh, subsequently we also want to uh, reduce imports then uh, if we promote uh, more uh, uh, biomass or cellulose based uh, activities in the rural areas there is a potential for generating more employment and like uh, there is a scheme called as m narega so similarly we also want to create waste to wealth so with these ambitious uh, opportunities we have so the government thinks of uh, promoting this biofuels at a large similarly the existing biodiversity of the country can also be put to optimum use by utilizing dry lands 
most of the places uh, where uh, we have a lot of land available but due to water scarcity or some other problems we are not able to utilize those lands fully if we can come up with some solution for uh, utilizing those dry lands so there is a possibility of generating the local employment similarly we can also create some additional income for the local population so these are some of the opportunities that india has with regard to biofuel sector then if you see the vision so how how are we going to achieve this uh, noble uh, initiative so we have to follow many initiatives we have to we have to be committed for ourselves we have to take a lot of lead into this so what we have to do is we have to increase usage of biofuels in energy and transportation sector because we have uh, we know that 6.7% of india's gdp is contributing uh, to uh, for the oil itself and most of them is imported so we have to reduce the import substitution and uh, we have to increase the biofuel production and then the increased biofuels uh, have to be used in energy and transportation sectors similarly we have to promote domestic feed stock which is utilized for most of the so we have to find uh, we have to intervene some technologies which can use this unused uh, or uh, unused biomass that is available in abundant quantity in the country so that this biomass can be converted as a biofuel that's we are going to address the problem of waste to wealth so some most of the times what happens is the waste that is generated is also a problem so it has to be disposed of properly so accordingly this could be one of the solution uh, for addressing that environment problem also so but uh, it has a dual advantage one way we are addressing the waste disposal problem on the other hand we are also creating wealth out of that waste so which will contribute to national energy security and these are also in line with international protocols and agreements for which india is a party at the international level similarly we can create a lot of new employment opportunity for local community then uh, sometimes we, and uh, we have to encourage application of advanced technology for generation of biofuels like uh, rice straw wheat straw sometimes agriculture residues which are being uh, disposed of uh, are not utilized properly can be tapped for uh, making these fuels in the future so this is the vision of this biofuel document then goal we want to uh, ensure the availability of biofuels in the country thereby increasing its blending percentage so we have a target of uh, blending 5% or 20% uh, ambitious targets in order to do that what we should do is we have to get the biofuel available so until and we have uh, abundant quantity of biofuel available in the market you, you won't be able to blend it also with petrol or diesel in order to blend that you need the uh, biofuel so in order to make that biofuel we have to increase its production so if you see the current blending percentage in petrol is around only 2% whereas in diesel it is less than 0.1% but if you see the target 20% blending of ethanol in petrol and 5% blending of biodiesel in diesel is proposed by 2030 if we want to achieve this 20% uh, blending in petrol and 5% in diesel so we have to work substantially we have to use all kinds of strategies technologies and then we have to increase its production so and then we have to make this biofuel available in the market for enabling them to blend it with the existing petrol or diesel so how how this goal is to be achieved by so this is uh, something like what we in order to address that issue what we are trying to do is we are reinforcing ongoing ethanol and biodiesel supplies through increasing domestic production first thing is we have to increase our domestic production then similarly we have to set up second generation bio refineries similarly new feed stocks new feed stocks have to be uh, 
uh, have to be find out and they have to be uh, integrated then uh, a lot of research has to be done on that how those uh, feed stock that is which is unutilized which is causing an environment problem can be utilized properly and then uh, some strategies or technological intervention is required to use that feed stock for biofuels then similarly so getting uh, efficiently efficient high yields high production uh, with uh, with the minimal uh, investments or minimal technology or minimal budget is another challenge so we have to work on that front also then similarly we have to create a suitable environment for biofuels and its integration with it. so when you mix it also it should not have any uh, problem so those kind of there could be some issues sometimes the more uh, percentage of blending you go sometimes you don't know until unless you do some kind of research and see that so if you blend with 20% or 30% what is maximum probability that we can go so all those kinds of uh, basic and advanced research has to be taken to address this problem in an effective way uh, if you see the biofuel definition per se that has been um, enacted in this uh, biofuel document it's it talks like uh, these are the fuels which can be produced from renewable resources and used in place of or in blend with diesel petrol or other fuels for transport stationary portable and other applications so they can be used they can be used solely as a substitute or they can be even blended and they can be used for transport or other applications similarly the definition of renewable resources uh, is defined as these are the biodegradable fraction of products waste and residues from agriculture forestry tree based oil other non edible oils and related industries as well as the biodegradable fraction of industrial and municipal waste so renewable resources could be uh, from a wide range of sectors like it could be from agriculture it could be from forestry it could be from trees it could be from non edible oils it could be from municipal waste also that's how these definitions are defined in this policy similarly so what are the different kinds of biofuels that has been defined in this policy document the one is the bioethanol what do we mean by bioethanol ethanol something which is produced from biomass such as sugar containing materials so one definition talks about ethanol that is produced from biomass which contains sugar like materials like what are those sugar cane sugar beet sweet sorghum etc similarly the ethanol that is produced from starch content containing materials so if you see the example of starch containing materials they are like corn cassava potato etc similarly the ethanol that is produced from cellulosic materials such as uh, bagasse wood waste agriculture forestry residues if you see the typical composition of a biomass it will have mainly three fractions one is cellulosic fraction the other one is hemicellulosic fraction and the third one is lignin compounds basically cellulosic fraction if you break down through uh, enzymatic saccharification you get uh, monosaccharides basically sugar glucose and this will act as a primary precursor molecules in any fermentation process and then uh, this glucose can be converted to uh, ethanol butanol or any other products so that's how the cellulosic materials and any other renewable resources that are generated from industrial waste so the basically what we mean to say uh, bioethanol is the ethanol that is produced from any of these materials can be called as a bioethanol it could be a sugar it could be a starch it could be a cellulosic material or it could be an industrial waste also these are the starting molecules which can be used for production of ethanol so the end product is called as a bioethanol then similarly what do we mean by biodiesel a methyl or ethyl ester of fatty acids produced from non vegetable oils 
acid oil used cooking oil or animal fat and bio oil the so diesel that is produced from oils especially non edible oils because there is always a challenge that food versus fuel so if we use the uh, edible uh, oils for the fuel then we'll have shortage of uh, edible oils also so that is why we are targeting non edible oils so the diesel that is produced from uh, these materials can be called as biodiesel similarly there is a definition for advanced biofuels what do we mean by advanced biofuels so any fuel that is produced from lignocellulosic feedstock so it will have low co2 emission or high greenhouse gas reduction and it should not compete with food crops for land use like uh, so food versus fuel issue has to be sorted out fuel such as 2g ethanol algae based 3g biofuels bio cng etc all these bio hydrogen bio methanol so which are uh, drop in fuels with uh, municipal solid waste etc uh, can be qualified or can be called as advanced biofuels similarly there is another uh, interesting definition in this policy that what is called as a drop in fuels so what do we mean by drop in fuels is any liquid fuel produced from biomass agri residues waste such as municipal solid waste plastic waste industrial waste which meets the indian standards for uh, uh, and which can be blended in vehicles without any modification in the engine systems can be called as drop in fuels similarly bio cng the purified form of bio similar cng is similar to that of fossil based natural gas these are the some of the definitions that have been given in the policy document sometimes it is very important for us to understand what exactly we can call as a particular type of product so the scope and the definition is very clearly defined you can refer the policy document for details more details on that similarly what is the strategy and approach so uh, as i said earlier so in order to address this uh, challenge of uh, import substitution of fuels so government has adopted a multi pronged approach to promote and encourage use of biofuels by one thing is we can blend ethanol in petrol so there is an ongoing program called as ethanol blended petrol program so in this what we will do is we will make bioethanol we will produce bioethanol and we will blend a certain percentage as of now it's a 2% which is being blended in petrol the target is 20% so if we produce more amount of bioethanol and blend it with uh, the existing petrol similarly we have to promote second generation ethanol technologies so similarly blending biodiesel in diesel through biodiesel blending program there are two programs like ethanol blended petrol biodiesel blending program so in both these cases what Uh, we are planning is increase the blending percentage so that the dependency of uh, petrol requirement can be reduced similarly we should also focus in other alternative fuels that can be generated from municipal solid waste or industrial waste or biomass etc so further focus we should give on including bio cng bio methanol bio hydrogen etc so the major thrust of the policy is to ensure availability of biofuels from indigenous feed stock so to address this issue what we are trying to, uh, what the government is trying to do is the government is trying to make a repository of national biomass so in different places we uh, india is a huge country with different agroclimatic conditions i grow different types of soil pattern soil conditions etc and uh, each state or each region will have its unique biomass first thing is we should make a repository or we should inventorize what type of biomass is available in the country uh, and uh, what is the quantity of the biomass that is available uh, what type, in which region it is available how much it is available like this so this is called as a national biomass repository then similarly 
uh, it is not like I tell and you do it. So government wants to have a consultative approach because this uh, this is a typical uh, Herculean task also, which needs uh, inputs and uh, support of different types of stakeholders. So government has planned for a consultative approach by involving all stakeholders so to address several problems related to uh, this entire chain now. So if you see the entire chain, you have you could there could be a problem in procurement, there could be a problem in production, there could be a problem in storage, there could be a problem in distribution, there could be a problem problem in blending, etc. So each step, uh, government is meticulously planning through a consultative approach. We are taking inputs from the experts, international, national experts, institutions are engaged wherever there is. A, an intervention by any organization or any expert is required. So uh, that is all is being done to address this problem in an effective way. Similarly, appropriate because this uh, this is some novel initiative that has to be taken uh, up by industries also. So they also need to be appropriately uh, supported through some financial and uh, fiscal measures for development and promotion of biofuels. Similarly, research, development, and demonstration uh, will also have to be supported because until unless you do a lot of R&D, you don't know how your strain behaves, how, how your technology, how your production is coming up. So for that, what we need is we need to do a lot of R&D. So government is also promoting this R&D. Then interventions and enabling mechanisms. If you see the feedstock availability and development, the present policy of ethanol blended petrol allows bioethanol to be procured from non feedstock like molasses, cellulose, and lignocellulose materials. And similarly, the biodiesel can be produced from any edible or non edible oil. However, biodiesel coming for the blending program is presently being manufactured from imported sources like palm steel. Right now, the biodiesel that we are using is mostly procured because uh, there are some technological issues or something. That is why we want to promote this program at large also. And instead of edible oils, more emphasis is given for non-edible oils. Similarly, the domestic raw materials, uh, the potential domestic raw materials that can be used for uh, these biofuels, as which are available in India is like for ethanol we can use molasses similarly sugarcane juice the biomass in the form of grasses agriculture residues especially the rice straw cotton stock corn cobs bagas etc then the sugar containing materials like sugar beets sweets sorghum etc and starch containing materials like i said earlier corn cassava etc Sometimes uh, the damaged food grains like wheat, broken rice, etc., which are unfit for human consumption, can also be used as a raw material for this ethanol production. Now, the another in, uh, important or interesting area is since India has long coastline, also we can uh, think of using algal feedstock and cultivation of seaweeds also for using uh, this as a potential uh, uh, raw material for ethanol production. Similarly, for biodiesel production, we are emphasizing on non-edible oil seeds, sometimes used cooking oil, because used cooking oil is one of the potential problems also because uh, uh, we don't have a proper uh, mechanism for disposal of used uh, cooking oil. Most of the households or even small restaurants, they just throw them into, uh, into the wash basins or uh, into the waste uh, they treat just like now uh, which is unfit is just discarded if we can establish some system so where uh, this collection like solid waste uh, we are doing hazardous waste so it, if we can collect these things and we can use it for uh, diesel production it could be one solution both uh, for addressing the waste oil disposal as well as for biodiesel production similarly the advanced biofuels can be uh, produced from biomass, municipal solid waste, and industrial waste, plastic waste, etc. The scope of raw materials for procurement of 
ethanol under ethanol blended program will be increased so what we have to do is to increase this availability the policy will allow production of ethanol from b molasses as well as directly from sugarcane juice so this is one incentive that has been given to the distilleries so they can use uh, the sugarcane juice also directly for production of ethanol similarly this policy will also allow, allow production of ethanol from damaged food grains like wheat broken rice etc which are unfit for human consumption so opening of this route for ethanol production will not only help in utilizing the installed capacities of grain based distilleries but also cover the raw materials from which ethanol can be produced most of the time what we have uh, what we see is we have large uh, quantities of distilleries several number of distilleries which are connected to sugar processing industries so basically the sugar availability is not throughout the year it is hardly for uh, uh, four to six months so what happens is the whatever the bagas whatever the molasses that has been generated during those sugar production will be used for distillery and most of the time the quantity of the molasses or the by product that is generated is not sufficient or not uh, fulfilling the requirement of a distillery to run throughout the year so that way most of the time what happens is its capacity is not utilized fully so if we use this strategy there is a possibility that the raw material will available in abundant quantities and distilleries can also function at its full capacity for production then similarly uh, emphasis has also been laid on uh, identifying surplus biomass pockets in the country like i said earlier uh, if we make a repository of uh, where what kind of biomass in which place what kind of biomass is available so sometimes what happens is only in some particular pockets industries are, uh, are, are established and the biomass that is available in those resources, those regions is only used so if we have a complete uh, pocket if we have an inventory and we know where this biomass is available in abundance so we can tap those biomass and use it for uh, this our uh, these things similarly we have to encourage farmers for usage of waste lands for uh, growing crops like which are non edible oil seeds or uh, oil or crops such as pongamia neem castor jatropha etc whose seeds can be used uh, for uh, biodiesel production similarly we have to give emphasis on establishing suitable supply chain mechanisms feed stock collection center and fair pricing mechanisms also so that uh, all the stakeholders get equally benefited and they also uh, does not incur any substantial losses similarly the quantity of waste that is available across the country has to be collected through a well established network of collection mechanism and then once you have abundant quantity of this raw material they can be used for uh, any type of uh, biofuel production so if we just see what is this blending and bio refinery program currently uh, if we see the ethanol ethanol which is uh, ethanol blended program coming up from molasses root as a by product of sugar industry at the present level of cane and sugar production about 350 million metric tons and 26 to 28 million metric tons per annum the maximum quantity of molasses available is about 13 million metric ton which is sufficient to produce only 300 crore liters of alcohol or ethanol so right now we have a severe shortage of this raw material because if we want to uh, blend it uh, reach the target of 20% we have to increase the production substantially so in order to increase the production at a substantial level we need the more amount of raw material so that is how this is an entire chain that has to be integrated from the biomass to the final product similarly uh for ethanol production one uh, if you see the statistics one for production of 1 million metric ton of sugar uh, it, can, it sorry if 1 million metric ton of sugar is 
saccharified, it can produce hardly 60 crore liter of ethanol. By utilizing this option, distilleries can be encouraged to produce ethanol directly from sugarcane instead of uh, using the sugarcane for sugar production and then the biomass, uh, the molasses that is generated out of this uh, process uh, being used for ethanol, instead of that sugar can be allowed to be used directly for ethanol production. So which has which increases the potential for more uh, production. Similarly, the alternate uh, raw materials for uh, ethanol such as sugar containing material, sugar beets, sweet sorghum and starch, etc. can be used. So what is this uh, second generation ethanol? Few studies uh, have indicated that a surplus biomass availability of around 120 to 160 million metric ton annually, if converted, has the potential to yield about 3000 crore liters of ethanol annually. That means India has huge potential. But the only thing is we need to tap it properly. So we could, there could be abundant availability of raw materials. But we should know which raw material, how to be used. And then if we around 120 to 160 million metric tons, we can produce around 3000 crore liters of ethanol annually. Similarly, uh, so some incentives are also given uh, by the government for uh, those industries which take up this kind of uh, projects or the, this approach. The 2G ethanol industry is driven by incentives as the technology is to be proven at commercial scale and the ethanol so produced is more environment friendly. This will be a major instrument in driving infrastructural growth. Like in, uh, from various ministries also you have a lot of uh, funding schemes like SBARI, then uh, BIPP Biotech uh, Industry Partnership Program of Department of Biotechnology. Uh, and there are a few other initiatives also from DBT, DST, CSIR. So you can uh, use all those funding schemes also for addressing this uh, uh, potential pro environmental problem so that uh, you can take up your R&D and then if you're successful, uh, government will be Happy to support you in uh, taking up of your technology for a uh, next pilot scale level or even for commercial scale level of. Similarly, the other incentive is like offtake assurance. Like public sector oil marketing companies have agreed to sign ethanol purchase agreements with 2G ethanol suppliers for a period of 15 years to, pro pro to provide assured market to private stakeholders. See, now your uh, now biggest advantage in this sector what i would see is you have a ready to buy customers with you because all oil public sector oil companies have been mandated to buy all from any private stakeholders so if you produce there is nothing like you don't have a market or you don't have a scope there is obvious market if anybody is interested in setting up of an industry and if he takes up his production activities there is, there is an assured market. So then similarly, the biodiesel blending program. So the current uh, blending percentage of biodiesel, as I said earlier, is less than 0.5%. So we have to increase this. So what uh, one of the strategy that is being used for promotion of uh, this uh, biodiesel production is or incentive is in-house produced waste cooking oil has a source uh, is a potential source for biodiesel production so accordingly what we have to do is we have to establish some chain of small trees or vendors and traders and if we can, if we are able to or if we are successful in collection of this used waste cooking oil we can use that as a precursor as or as a raw material for production of biodiesel so one way it will solve uh, our environmental problem also the other way it gives an emphasis uh, for uh, this biodiesel production also so similarly uh, these are some of the other uh, biofuels which have some huge potential to be used like waste to energy as i said uh, earlier 
So municipal solid waste is one potential problem. Disposal of uh, solid waste in all the municipalities is a big problem. So if you, if some technological interventions can be brought into for address using this MSW as a starting material for production of uh, biofuels or biogas or bio CNG or anything. So that way, one way it will address environmental problem. On the other way, it will also provide an opportunity for uh, reducing import substitution for the country. But that means you are doing a service for the nation also. So similarly, these are the other uh, initiatives which are taken up. Then there is a huge scope for algal biofuels. Uh, uh, but uh, I understand that some limited research is being uh, undertaken only by a few uh, nation, uh, national level institutions or industries. But uh, I've gone through a couple of papers where I have seen that uh, there is a huge potential for this uh, fuel. Like if you, but uh, since India has a long coastline also, we can use all available natural resources of the country for addressing some of the uh, problems like the production of biofuels from algae uh, yields lot many times of oil in compared to like seeds or grains so I don't remember the statistics exactly but roughly I saw somewhere that it's almost like 10 or 20 times higher oil production can be obtained through cultivation of uh, algae in one acre in comparison to other oils like vegetable oils, groundnut oil or soya bean, sunflower oil or something like that. That's almost 10% uh, higher uh, potential is there. So this is one niche area where uh, we can uh, target and uh, we can do wonders also if we are successful and uh, for doing this kind of research also government has a lot of schemes if you can use those schemes properly and uh, submit your proposals and if you are successful uh, in getting a uh, product or if you find a solution that will be really wonderful similarly government in this policy government has provided some sort of uh, financing and uh, financial support also for those industries or those uh, companies which uh, come forward to take up this uh, biofuel uh, production. So like uh, government will consider declaring oil extraction and processing units for production of biodiesel and storage and distribution as a priority sector for the purpose of lending by financial institution. Suppose you want to set up an industry, you always need uh, financial support from uh, the banking sector. Most of the time what happens is you have to submit your proposal and all things and uh, based on the uh, DSC ratio or, uh, uh, or the viability and all those things, your projects are funded. Here, this is since this is a priority sector which has been declared with the government, so the probability of getting uh, financial support or financial incentives from banking institution will be quite easy in compared to uh, setting up of any other industries. Similarly, uh, multilateral and bilateral funding uh, would also be encouraged for biofuel development. Then similarly, joint ventures and investments in biofuel sectors would be encouraged. 100% FDI in biofuel technology will be encouraged through automatic approval route. So this is one of the uh, wonderful uh, initiate policy initiative of the government I would say because if you have some lead or if you have a technology but you don't have adequate funding to take it up to a larger scale or a commercial scale you can collaborate with some other companies or you can invite um, foreign direct investment from uh, interested companies so that way uh, this is uh, promoting uh, the research and uh, as well as encouraging biofuel production in the country. Similarly, the other uh, financial and fiscal incentives is like uh, government will uh, consider extending financial incentives, including viability gap funding, subsidies and grants for biofuels. Like I said, there are several schemes of uh, DST, DBT and other uh, MNRE, 
and other ministries which can which sub provide lot of financial support for r and d scale up pilot scale production even for uh, commercial scale production then similarly government also envisages setting up of a national biofuel fund for providing financial incentives for those companies which take up this uh, biofuel uh, production related activities similarly other uh, tax incent other incentives in the form of tax credits advanced depreciation on plant expenditure similarly differential pricing viability gap funding etc is also supported similarly opportunities for generating carbon credits for saving non co2 emissions is also uh, given uh, uh, is also encouraged so so those companies uh, multinational companies or those big companies who want to uh, use these carbon credits for other purposes can leverage on this uh, policy and can use it for their uh, further the uh, for further other activities similarly uh, public sector banks and uh, nabards will be encouraged to provide funding and financial assistance through soft loans similarly emphasis is also so given on r and demonstration so this policy encourages innovation and trust to r and d so so anybody interested in r and d can take up this area this has huge potential so high priority will be accorded to indigenous r and d technologies based on low feed stocks so and then uh, government will also consider supporting you for uh, filing your patents global pct or indian patents or these things also and then you can uh, have a collaborations with uh, lot of uh, companies or industries or institutes to take up to address some of the challenges so some of the five or uh, some of the sorry four prioritized uh, uh r&d areas include the following like biofuel feed stock production like more emphasis on biomass identification of biomass conversion of that biomass into um, monosaccharides or use cellulosic materials or other useful materials which can be used as a biofuels that's one feed stock is one area then conversion technology conversion of this feed stock into Uh, you are raw material is one uh, technological platform that will be given as a priority so then technology for end use application including modification of biofuel like for example sometimes uh, like you go for example like biobutanol production so if you uh, do some research and if you want to produce biobutanol on a larger scale what happens is suppose if you are using a clostridium strain strain there you will get other by products also like you get acetone acetic acid ethanol and then butyric acid butanol and sometimes at the minimal concentration also at 1.5 or 2% of ethanol also that will be proven as lethal to the microorganism that is being used in the culture so what you have to do is you have to identify some innovative uh, routes like either you knock out certain, certain genes which does not enhance your uh, which can be used only for uh, butanol production or you have to continuously strip the produce material from the reactors so those kind of uh, product separation technologies or downstream processing technologies are also very important and that is also given as a priority then uh, utilization of bio by products or biofuels like uh, municipal solid waste or industrial waste or other waste which are discarded or which is not used uh, efficiently or which is going to cause an environmental problem can be used uh, in efficient way for biofuel production so these are the some of the r and d uh, related prioritized areas so similarly government is also uh, planning to provide grants for uh, research organization or institutes which undertake r and d and setting up of demonstration projects then similarly under the life cycle analysis if you see uh, there are several commitments uh, with the government of india also for climate change and uh, we also have a mandate to promote clean technology so 
these are some of the areas which should be encouraged at large then similarly quality standards quality standards would be set up or uh, would be evolved uh, for bioethanol biodiesel and for blending also the bureau of indian standards would be vested with this responsibility they already have some existing standards but uh, as and when there is a, there is a requirement new guidelines would be formed and new standards will be uh, promulgated in consultation with uh, relevant stakeholders uh, basically the objective is to encourage uh, development of required skill set so that trained and skilled manpower is uh, available for adapting of these new demands of it. suppose uh, uh, we are we are successful in uh, meeting our targets so we have a huge quantity of biofuel that is available in the market so we want to blend it at appropriate ratios so we need uh, skilled manpower also for testing and uh, and uh, confirming that uh, this is as per the stipulated norms and all those things so accordingly these are the, some of the standards which could be set up by government so similarly distribution and marketing of biofuels so as i said earlier oil marketing com com companies will continue will not only buy they will also continue to store distribute and market biofuels and they will be primarily responsible for maintaining and improving the storage distribution and marketing infrastructure the government uh, in long run would also consider uh, giving this responsibility to other players also similarly depending upon uh, many factors like quality standards all this will be taken and uh, what i mean to say is appropriate distribution and marketing strategies would be put in place then similarly uh, there will be appropriate pricing policy on these biofuels also so at present uh, we have only the, uh, the price of first generation molasses based ethanol is determined by the government based on the recommendation of a committee there is a committee an empowered committee which is constituted by government of india that uh, meets uh, once in a while and then they uh, determine the price that has to be paid for these distilleries which use molasses for production of ethanol similarly for blending in diesel the and the price is determined by oil marketing companies whereas uh, the molasses to ethanol the price is determined by the committee constituted by government and the diesel price is determined by omcs then similarly the advanced biofuels will be given a differential pricing to further incentivize them so and this would be done in consultation with national biofuel coordination committee so imports and export of biofuels right now as we said uh, uh, in the earlier slides that 82% we are importing from outside so the basic objective of this fuel biofuel policy is to discourage imports and to enhance domestic production so under this policy allowing import will adversely affect the domestic biofuels hence import of biofuels will not be allowed in future similarly the feedstock import requirement will be decided by the national biofuel coordination committee because if we uh, we, we are also open to import feed stock but not the finished product similarly because we have a domestic requirement which is not being met fully so so export of biofuels will also be discouraged or will not be allowed that means we are encouraging domestic production we are discouraging export of biofuels and similarly discouraging import of bioethanol uh, the biofuels from abroad so here if you see it is not one department or uh, one uh, agency's responsibility this has intervention of several departments ministries uh, including stakeholders so government has a uh, stipulated role of different stakeholders like uh, we have to engage with everyone we have to actively participate with all other stakeholders like ministries departments state government farmers industries professionals so basically our objective is to achieve 
more uh, generation of feedstock in sustainable manner on wastelands we have to optimally use the wasteland for sustainable production of feedstock similarly we should encourage farmers to grow variety of feedstock on their marginal lands similarly establishment of suitable supply chain for feedstock then feedstock storage infrastructure then wherever approvals are required expeditious approvals have to be given to the establishment of single window clearance and other tax incentives subsidized power water supply access roads etc will be provided for biofuel plants then uh, if you see the role of states also so some of the states like uh, state government uh, they already have the biofuel development boards the experiences or the learnings or the lessons that is available with those state governments would be used for uh, promotion of uh, these technology in other uh, states also so uh, state governments are uh, required to decide on land use for plantation of non edible uh, oil seed bearing plants or other feed stocks similarly necessary infrastructure would be created to support biofuel progress across the entire value chain so states will also be encouraged for granting single window clearance for setting up of biofuel plants normally uh, if you want to set up an industry you need several different uh, approvals and it takes a uh, considerable amount of time but through a single window clearance you will have the luxury of uh, getting your approval within a short span of time similarly each uh, different ministry or department have uh, different role to take up so these are some of the uh, ministries which are being involved in entire value chain of this biofuel uh, process development like for example if you see ministry of petroleum and natural gas will be the overall coordinating ministry for development of biofuels so its primary objective would be like framing a national biofuel policy and its implementation then development and implementation of pricing and procurement policy then uh, similarly ministry of rural development would be uh, given has a mandate of encouraging plantation supply chain activities along the rural livelihood programs through m narega then ministry of agriculture is encouraged to suggest come up with uh, some plant materials through nurseries and plantation for biofuels so then similarly moef would be encouraged to use uh, forest land for this plantation non edible oil plantation so ministry of science and technology dbt they will like, they will provide financial support for r&d related activities then road transport department would be uh, encouraged to use uh, biofuels in transport sector similarly railways would also be given a mandate like this different ministries have different mandates under this national biofuel policy so wherever possible international cooperation Uh, and uh, joint ventures will also be encouraged so companies would be encouraged to tie up or have uh, partnerships or joint venture collaborations mous with uh, different stakeholders for addressing this problem so at the center there is an institutional mechanism which takes care of uh, all these issues like biofuel policy institutional mechanism at the center as it said uh, to establish synergies between various departments and agencies so there is an empowered committee for policy guidance and they'll uh, review on different aspects of biofuel development and they promote utilization of this uh, technology similarly a national biofuel coordination committee headed by the minister petroleum and natural gas and uh, having representatives of all the ministries would uh, would be there and this committee would periodically meet to uh, see the overall uh, coordination or to understand the difficulties in implementation of this program and they will also closely monitor monitor all the programs related to this biofuel uh, this so similarly at the state level also this policy encourages setting up of state level uh, biofuel uh, development boards 
already there are five states in the country chatisgarh up karnataka rajasthan and uttarakhand which have this uh, biofuel uh, development boards and the experiences and the lessons of the knowledge and the wisdom that these state governments have would be taken up and would be shared with uh, other uh, states also and then other states would also be encouraged to set up similar boards to promote biofuels in their respective state so and these existing uh, boards are expected to provide hand holding services to or provide guidance or mentorship to those states which are uh, planning to venture into these programs so that's all for the day i think uh, I, i was within within whatever the time was given I completed my presentation and uh, this is the policy i just discussed the policy biofuel policy that is existing there so and these are the different uh, activities that the government is planning to take up this uh, promote this biofuels in the country so with this i close my presentation and i would be happy to take a few quick questions if you have any thank you thank you thank you so much Dr. Somo, I'm not able to hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Due to some connection problem, maybe it is there. Just I said, just wait for some time. If any the participant have any doubts. So. Uh, good morning, sir. Dr. Somo, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. A very small doubt, or rather, it's not a doubt. I just want to seek an information. Uh, whatever you have presented, it was a very informative one that you have given. So my question or query was basically, uh, what is the progress in terms of alkyl feedstock used as a raw material for uh, bioethanol production? You can say, or uh, any sort of uh, alternative fuel production. So how how efficiently it has been used, even in our country, or the related information, whatever you can share with us. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the information or to the best of my understanding so there is a limited uh, work is going on in algal biofuels like uh, the only few institutions like terry the reliance energies which are doing up some uh, even the praj industries in pune they are doing some uh, work related to this algal biofuels but i don't think they have come up to a commercial scale as of now to the best of my knowledge no industry has come up for com commercial scale they are in mostly in r and d or pilot scale but a uh, lot of research is going on on those areas so that uh, thank you sir actually that's what i wanted to ask that whether it has been commercially uh, now came into utilization in uh, in our country or more else also if it is so uh, you should excuse me i don't have this updated information but <laughs> but the uh, the kind of information what i had is only these few organization so working on that reliance praj and heavy uh, in these institutes perfect sir thank, thank you sir thank you so much sir well thank you muli uh, so any other participant if any doubts just let me uh, let us know so dr muli is here sir i am balaji yeah good morning yeah. good morning sir so what is the viability gap funding sir viability gap funding uh, in the sense is like you have a technology but uh, there could be a potential problem like venture funds but you don't know how you will be successful you have an idea you want to take up you don't know uh, whether it will be uh, building in the kind of a desired uh, output or not you are mostly in dilemma so, so, and banks if you go for uh, financing what they they last you is a project report or a feasibility report so until unless you establish that you set up an industry you will produce this much and you will get this much profit and you will repay their loans or these things 
their banking institutions will not fund you but in r and d you can't uh, you can't be assured that you have a defined product right. within the time you have a dilemma existing so you know, that's called the viability gap funding and there also in order to understand that you need to do some research and for that you need some funding for so that is that purpose government has some schemes like for example in dbt you get up this biotech ignition grant if you have an idea you can be funded also funding send kodtar ant kelbeku varange idu try madu adakke enu Uh, please don't discuss among yourself because uh, uh, other participants are also hearing. Uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar, can you just uh, mute your mic or you can whatever the uh, I'll I'll see the mind. Okay, sir. Can I ask one more question, yeah. sir? Sure, sure. Okay, sir. So now, uh, so I am I am from uh, mechanical department. I did my PhD in uh, NIM biodiesel. Uh, so now um, this electric vehicle is coming. So everybody, even if I talk about this IC engine or biodiesel, they are discouraging. So even the students are not taking the elective subject. Um, students are not coming to do um, even B Tech project, M Tech project, or even the, the students are not coming for. Uh, Uh, phd programs even if we, if we send any paper regarding the biodiesel in the journals were uh, uh, discouraging so you please uh, uh, go for some other new topic like that they are saying uh, so we are facing uh, a lot of issues how to promote this biofuel and how to take it forward where to concentrate as a Uh, see I, we are not from uh, biotechnology group or the chemical group so we are from mechanical side uh, we are worrying bit so how to take it forward sir sir uh, a very tricky question uh, i would say that necessity is the mother of invention because uh, i and uh, i was a biotechnologist normally for vaccine development if you see it takes usually uh, Eight to ten years to develop a novel vaccine, but in the kind of a pandemic situation we are going through, we have uh, come up with new innovative solutions, collaborations, and we are trying to develop a vaccine as quickly as possible, maybe within a one year also. Which was early as well thought that it was near to impossible that to, uh, to bring a new vaccine you will need minimum eight years, ten years like that. But now we can see that. uh you can bring up these vaccines also within one year also so i fully agree with your point also because the technology is developing so you have to mold yourself with the emerging developments and accordingly find some solutions if you stick uh, to the same uh, your basic concepts you will have some problem still i would say because uh, the biodiesel uh, technologies are some issues when people are going why don't you try some other new technologies like from water to energy or those things from your uh, relevant knowledge you can use that's what i say as i just is you have to change your strategy with the required current requirement because you cannot stick to the old basic principles because technology is developing the world is moving fast and they are not going to wait for us thanks okay. 